agitation, as you know, is a very important clinical problem for patients with Alzheimer's disease and their families and caregivers uh, because it's very disrupting. It often leads to institutionalization because families become unable to take care of the patient at home. And there are no treatments that are currently approved for the treatment of agitation in Alzheimer's disease. So we're currently studying a drug called lumetepron, which is an atypical antipsychotic with a novel mechanism of action to treat this important condition. And we're currently conducting a large phase three trial, which is underway and progressing well, and where we hope to have or will have um, some uh, data from an interim analysis that will be done before the end of this year. The drug works, as I mentioned, in a novel way. It's an atypical antipsychotic in that it has both serotonin and dopamine effects, but it's different from other atypical antipsychotics in that it has a greater difference between the relative receptor occupancy at the serotonin receptor and the dopamine receptor, which allows us to use lower doses and still achieve good effects. It also works uniquely at the dopamine D2 receptor in that all other antipsychotics, atypical antipsychotics, are either antagonists at both the presynaptic and postsynaptic receptor or partial agonists at both the presynaptic and postsynaptic receptor whereas our drug is a presynaptic partial agonist and a postsynaptic antagonist. And again, what this allows us to do is to achieve the appropriate amount of D2 effect with lower receptor occupancy, which reduces extrapyramidal symptoms and also endocrine effects like elevation and prolactin. So we, see, we don't see those with the use of lumetepron, which has now been studied in a very large program in schizophrenia with over 1,500 patients treated. Um, and so far, we see no effect uh, on extrapyramidal symptoms, no akathisia, no rigidity, no tremor, uh, and we also don't see elevations in prolactin. So uh, and the other unique things about the drug are that it has effects on uh, glutamate. So through the D1, receptor, we see downstream effects on glutamatergic neurotransmission at both the NMDA and the AMPA receptors. And downstream of that, we see protein phosphorylation changes that are similar to those seen with ketamine. So all of that suggests that the drug might have antidepressant effects and in fact have rapid acting antidepressant effects. And then finally, it also has effects at the serotonin transporter. So it blocks reuptake of serotonin, which of course is also associated with antidepressant effects. So getting back to agitation and Alzheimer's disease, we think that there's good preclinical evidence and some clinical evidence as well that serotonin effects will, uh, of the drug will reduce agitation uh, because increased serotonin transmission is associated with increased aggression and agitation. Also, the agitation syndrome in Alzheimer's disease seems to be associated with a variety of abnormal behavioral and psychiatric states, including poor sleep, including depression. So these all fit together with the agitation syndrome. And since our drug has beneficial effects on sleep through the serotonin system and also on depression through several mechanisms, that together with the direct effect on agitation through serotonin suggests that at low doses we can achieve a good effect on agitation overall in Alzheimer's disease.